religion or that, that it, did it come from God or was it written by people long after the prophet? I don't think that the Quran comes from God and the reason that I don't think the Quran comes from God is that it seems to me recognisably a product of the culture of what we call late antiquity. So the whole sweep of Near Eastern history that embraces both Persian and Roman Christian and Jewish cultures. And the reason for that is very simple, that the Quran contains within itself all kinds of echoes of that culture. Moses is mentioned 130 odd times. The Virgin Mary has a more starring role in the Quran than she does in the New Testament. But you also have references to Alexander the Great. You have um, the S Christian story of the seven sleepers of Ephesus, a sort of wonderful Christian folktale, also appears in the Quran. Um, and yet the puzzle is, according to traditional Muslim narrative, Muhammad comes from a city, Mecca, that is um, pagan, that does not have large Jewish or Christian elements, that is buried within the desert, um, thousands of kilometres from the Roman frontier. And it, it seems to me that, that the reason why the origins of Islam is situated deep within the desert is precisely because it's important for Muslims when they make the case for the Quran as coming from God to demonstrate that it could not have come from human sources. And the reason why it's so urgent to do that is precisely because the human origins of it actually seem to me pretty clear. So essentially, Tom Holland, are you arguing that what we understand to be the source of Islam, the Quran, is uh, not what it appears to be? Well, what does it appear to be? I mean, according to Muslim tradition, it comes from God. And that, of course, is the foundational belief on which um, everything else about Islam essentially is raised. And if you are a Muslim, then, of course, you, you, you take for granted that this text is indeed divine, of divine origin. But if you're not a Muslim, um, and particularly if you're a historian of antiquity, you have to look at the Quran as you would any ancient text, be it the Iliad, the Aeneid, or, of course, the Bible. And you have say what is its origins in human terms. You have to explain it in human terms because if you're not doing that then you are effectively becoming a Muslim and you're dealing in theology rather than history. So I think that the story of Islam's origins as it is told by Muslims blanks out the clearly vital role that the history of the Persian and the Roman empires in the 6th and early 7th century played on the emergence of this religion. And your thesis is that um, people within that emerging triumphant Arab world knew that they needed a philosophy, a sort of binding philosophy for all these peoples they were defeated and, and out of this came Islam? I think that that makes it sound too sort of Machiavellian and calculating. I don't think they sat down and thought, oh, we must make up a religion to justify our rule. But this is a period where Anything that happens is presumed to derive from the will of God. And the Arabs, just like everyone else, are looking to the heavens and saying, well, what is going on here? Partly because of the plague, the war, the suffering that has been going on, but also because ultimately the Arabs end up conquering this stupefying empire. And it is the most miraculous thing imaginable. And so inevitably they come to think that God has given them a special role. Now, I'm sure that Muhammad's revelations, which ultimately get collated, put together, and to constitute what we now know as the Quran, have a role to play in this. It seems to me clear that, that, that the Arabs, right from the beginning, regard these Quranic phrases as holy. They don't try and alter them. But the process by which this gets shaped into a religion is a vastly more protracted process than Muslim tradition would imply. And so where would you see all this scholarship around the origins of Islam heading? Well, I think that um, it is prompted in large part by the fact that there are, mo there are a lot more Muslims living in the West. And so Islam, in that to that degree, is becoming a Western religion. And so therefore it is having the same focus of interest that Judaism and Christianity had earlier had in the 19th century. Um, and it's very telling that it's really only been since, say, the 70s and the 80s, when the profile of Islam in the West was starting to grow, that scholars have started to look at Islam in the way that they had previously been looking at the other two monotheistic religions. And so I think, ultimately, I suspect that a Western form of Islam will be a historicised Islam. 
just as Christianity in the West now is a historicized Christianity. It is one in which... What do you mean by that? It's one in which um, even believers recognize that the religion is a, a product of human cultural civilizational evolution as much as it is of divine revelation. And it is recognized that the stories that Muslims, Christians, Jews tell about the origins of their faith may have spiritual, may have theological significance. I mean, that is up to the, mm. the personal beliefs of the believer, but they are not necessarily to be regarded as history. See, it's just that all of this work is coming from westernized sources, isn't it? Uh, not Islamic scholars. I mean, what's at stake in your view for Islam and Muslim believers in all of this? Well, I think there is a real problem here because I think that this process of subjecting ancient texts, be they uh, religious or not, to scholarly scrutiny as we in the West would understand it, actually emerges from Christian discourse. Um, because right from the beginning, the earliest days of the Church Fathers, um, they are looking at the fact that you have four Gospels, that you have an Old and a New Testament, that you have all these various books, sifting it, weighing it up, contextualizing it, trying to work out you know, which, which, which aspects of the Bible are, are more important than the other. And so, in a sense, um, what, what scholars of ancient history and ancient texts do now is essentially a Christian methodology that has been stripped of its Christian context. And so there is a sense in which when this methodology gets applied to Islam, Muslims perhaps justifiably feel that this is a kind of Christian mm. approach mm. and therefore is all the more unsettling. And I think that the, the particular problem with Islam that Jewish and Christian scholars did not have is that for Muslims, the Quran is far more literally the word of God than even the Bible is. Um, there is, if you assume that the Quran is absolutely the word of God, then there is nothing within it that would lead you to question that proposition. Because in a sense, to question that proposition is to question the very basis of your faith. So I, I, I don't doubt that it is harder for Muslims to go through this process, even than it was for Christians, say, in the 19th century. But at the same time, I think it's inevitable that it's going to happen. So, I mean, do you, you're not a religious man yourself, so I suppose you can well, state... Well, I, I have a kind of guttering, flickering Anglicanism, which I suppose <laughs> is to say that I'm a, a sort of a culturally Christian agnostic. But I, I, and I'm certainly not contemptuous of religion. And I, I, you know, I hope that my book is not contemptuous of it. I regard the process by which these various monotheisms transform the world as, as perhaps the greatest intellectual revolution that human civilization has witnessed with incalculable impact upon the world. And that's precisely why I think it's so important to study it as history as well as, as theology or belief. But do you imagine that it will lead to some form of Reformation era or Enlightenment era for Islam? That's what some people are suggesting, just as occurred but, in, the, uh, in Christianity. No, because I think that, that to use the very, the, the very words Reformation or Enlightenment, they are specific to the evolution of Christianity. And to, to suggest that, oh, you know, it's 1400, it's time Islam <laughs> had, had a Reformation, is to imply that religions run like clockwork. Um, you know, you just wind them up and then they follow the same course. Religions, uh, I mean, Christianity and Islam are both recognisably born out of the same milieu, the same cultural melting pot of late antiquity. But since then, since the, the, the doctrines and the, 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 the um, fundamentals of the faith have clarified, they have then moved along very different lines, which is why, you know, to repeat what I said earlier, historical methodology evolved out of Christian discourse in a way that it hasn't within Muslim discourse, because the attitude of Christians towards the Bible and of Muslims to the Quran is fundamentally different. And so I, I absolutely do not think that you can, um, you can work out what will happen to Islam with reference to Christianity. And is it safe for you to be doing this work, this sort of work? Is it, is it, is it a, another form, as some people have suggested, of the satanic verses? Why, why would Muslims be upset about this? It's, it's clear that my, um, the foundation of my presumption 
is one of non-belief. I am not a Muslim and so by definition I don't think that the Quran came from God and I don't think that Muhammad was a prophet of God. Uh, and that being so, and as a historian of this period, I have to provide um, an explanation for what happened that makes sense in human terms. It would be ridiculous for me as a non-Muslim to say that it came from God. And naturally Muslims are perfectly content to recognise that. Tom Holland, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.